Cheddar Gorge in the UK. Uh, this is about as close as we get to the Grand Canyon. It's not as impressive as the Grand Canyon, but uh, you would be surprised. It is pretty spectacular. What is it there? It's Carboniferous Limestone. There's the gorge that kind of runs down through the uh, through the centre of, uh, of Cheddar Gorge. Cheddar, by the way, um, for all of you uh, Americans, is where cheddar cheese originally comes from uh, and not the slimy, horrible yellow stuff that you have. I'm talking proper cheddar cheese, right? Sort of knock your socks off uh, kind of cheddar cheese. Uh, it's matured in the caves because there are caves running down all through this carboniferous limestone. And yes, they get the cheese and they wrap it up and they store it in the caves because it's nice and cool and damp and it matures there for weeks to months to even years sometimes and it tastes absolutely wonderful of course if you go to Cheddar Gorge not only do you get to taste the cheese you also get some wonderful geology there's the scene from the top of the gorge yeah it's uh, pretty high uh, you get great views over the landscape and you also get to go down into the gorge and collect some fossils there I am collecting fossils and you can see all the little sort of white specks. They are all fossil brachiopods. Ah, brachiopod sea creatures. It's uh, a, a marine rock full of these sea creatures, full of these brachiopods. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely chock-a-block full of them. You can go digging through uh, all of the rubble there and find absolutely masses of fossils. Hey, Cheddar Gorge would be a good place to do a field trip. You get to go down into the caves as well. There's your brachiopods, plenty of them, buried in water, all washed together, dumped down very quickly, definitely evidence of a flood. Now, here's the plaque outside of the Cheddar Gorge cave. It says this plaque represents the sister cave relationship between Cheddar Show Caves and Janolan Caves, New South Wales in Australia. Now, John, you've been to Janolan Caves, but then so have I. Um, here we are in the Blue Mountains in Australia. It's again a bit like a Grand Canyon, although this one's probably closer to the size. Um, the difference is, of course, it's not really a desert. It's absolutely full of vegetation. And it's absolutely beautiful as well. And you can go down into Janolan Caves. And I did. Uh, a couple of supporters while we were down in the uh, Blue Mountains, uh, took me out and I had the privilege of visiting the Janolan Caves, going inside, having a bit of a dig around. It's Carboniferous Limestone. It's the same limestone. It's the same limestone as the stuff that's back at Cheddar Gorge. Not only are they uh, twin caves, they're twin geological formations as well. And guess what's inside them? Bacchiopods. Um that's quite a bit of distance, 10,500 miles or 16,000 kilometers, and yet it's the same geology, it's the same limestone, it's the same fossils. That is a big flood. You can go one step further and look at some other limestone formations as well. This is in Carthage in Tennessee. John took me out there in 2019. I've been out there a couple of times since then, and some great fossils from the limestone. Ah, I told you too quickly. What's the rock type? This is limestone, but it's not carboniferous limestone this time. It's Ordovician limestone. Um, still limestone, still pretty spectacular fossils that you can get out of it. Pretty spectacular road cuts as well. And one of the great things I love about the USA is that generally speaking, you can just pull up at the side of a road cut where it's gone through the geology and you can get out, pull your car over, get out and go digging. And look at what you find. More brachiopods. Absolutely chock-a-block full of them. Brachiopod shells. There they are squashed together. You also find some other interesting fossils around the area. Um, this is just up the road from where our big supporters live. A wonderful crinoid fossil mess. I mean, they've just been broken up and crushed and slurped together in a great big mass mess. Definitely a flooding event. And the point that we like to make is simple. It's got nothing to do with time, but everything to do with the process. If you want to get these fossil deposits on the size that they are, not only do you need a big flood, but you need a big flood that actually produces the correct process. This is one of the things that we're doing with our strata machines. We're having a look at that process. We spoke earlier about permineralization. 
we're talking about a process. We've been speaking about polystrate trees and to get them, we're talking about a process. All right, go to the Lake District in the UK. Again, stunning scenery, beautiful stuff. And guess what you find there? More Ordovician limestone. Hey, we've compared the Carboniferous limestone from the UK and Australia. Now we're having a look at Ordovician limestone and comparing it from the UK to the USA. Well, we're in a cave called Yorda's Cave here. You go down into the cave and there's a waterfall. You've got some beautiful stalactites and stalagmites down there as well. Uh, me and John spent many hours wandering around this cave, collecting samples, taking pH measurements of the water, the water coming from the waterfall, the water that's been on the cave floor, the water that's dripping from the stalactites and the stalagmites. Beautiful limestone formations all around, uh, absolutely glorious. And guess what you're finding in there as well? More. Brachiopod shells from the Ordovician limestone of the UK. Reckon beacons in the Wales, in Wales, um, a lot further south than up in the Lake District. And guess what you find? Some beautiful trilobites. Hey, we were finding trilobites in Tennessee, weren't we, John? Beautiful trilobites. Yeah, those two, those two are my trilobites, if I remember yeah, correctly. They're <laughs> your trilobites. They're here in, uh, on display in the UK Museum collection. Uh, this is where I took the photos of them. Absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. And look what we were finding in Tennessee. Trilobites. Uh, this is the, the back end of a trilobite, but still. 4,000 miles, 6,500 kilometres. That is still a really big flood. The same formation, the same fossils, the same geology um, from the USA to the UK. And you remember the same fossils that were here in the UK and the Carboniferous limestone being twinned with the same fossils and the same formation and the same location down in Australia? That's a really, really big flat. Now, you realise to get these kind of sizes of formations, I mean, John was talking to us earlier about the Carboniferous rocks, right, which go all over the world. That's a really big flat. Here we're talking about limestones, two different types of limestones. One goes from the USA to the UK, one goes from the UK to Australia. These are really big floods that we're talking about. And the point, it's got nothing to do with time, but everything to do with the process. Get the process right, it, has, it happens quickly. But it's not a case of get the process right, it happens quickly, get the process wrong, it takes a long time. Any rock formation which has fossils in them, it has to be the correct process and the process has to be quick. You have it slow, you simply will not get any fossils in the slightest.